Hi, and welcome to my coaching tip on data visualization. I'm Sue Nichols, a category management coach and facilitator from CMKG. I'd like to challenge you in the way you approach some of your work, and this is a really great topic for that. Data viz in retail and consumer packaged goods is about making compelling graphs and visuals that are easy to understand and really help you tell your story. I downloaded a graph from our survey software a few weeks ago to find out what our students find most valuable in their bi-monthly CMKG student webinars. And this is what it looked like. So where do your eyes go first? And how do you look around this slide? Anticipating how someone reads a slide with graphs or images isn't the same as how people are going to read text on a slide. We'll all look at different parts of the slide first, particularly when nothing really stands out on the slide. Unfortunately, a lot of our slides and presentations end up this way, where we accept what's provided to us as the default, either from some kind of a slide generator or from a program or from somebody else that you get the information from. You may have a point you're trying to show, but the visual isn't doing a good job of telling the story. Our challenge today is to improve this chart. So how do you make it more meaningful? You should start with identifying the purpose for this chart. And for this example, I want to show my audience what's most useful in the bi-monthly webinars that we run for our students. Now that we know the purpose, I want to get the colors right. There's too many bright colors with no strategic thinking behind those colors. It's just the color palette that's set up in PowerPoint. So by using gradient blue colors, or one color from light to dark, with the most important, or in my case the extremely useful, being the darkest, and the not at all useful being the lightest version of the blue, it helps the extremely useful and the very useful stand out more. Now I want to fix the y-axis descriptions. They're too long and they look terrible at that angle. So I can easily change it to a bar chart so the descriptions are easier to read. But it's still difficult to compare the results, especially keeping in mind that I really want to show the most useful elements of our webinars. So I decide to make a stacked bar chart. I also condensed the scale from five ratings to three. No limited use in gray, mid in light blue, and very too extremely useful in darker blue. Simplifying the classifications makes it easier to see what's very too extremely useful. Now there's some other things that I can do to improve this chart even more. This step is about creating clarity in the graph or clearing the clutter as much as possible and once again keeping my purpose in mind. So here's all the pieces that I can rework to make a more compelling data visualization for my audience. Let's see what it transpires into. So what I've done here is I've sorted in descending order based on very too extremely useful. I moved the legend to the top and only included the very too extremely useful results. I changed the title to reflect the most useful components of the webinar and also added in some icons. I removed the y-axis and added in data labels to show the numbers. I also changed the color from blue to orange because I realized orange really emanates better with excitement and we're really excited about how positive and useful these student webinars are for our students. But not including the other results here feels like I'm hiding something. But I realize that by adding in the not interested results, they actually add to my story and here's why. Adding in the mid and no to limited usefulness ratings shows that less than three to 8% of our students found no to limited use across all components of our student webinars, a really low number that should be drawn out. So our objective from here is to focus on what our students love and improve upon what's not very too extremely useful and try to get those right. And you'll notice that I did this presentation, I split it into two slides, but they're really both very important to telling my story. To summarize, there's a dramatic difference in the data visualization from the original or the before picture to the after slide. Remember that it's important to have the right visuals based on the story that you're trying to tell or your audience might not get it. If the visual serves no purpose towards your story, then don't include it. That's all for now. Thanks for checking out this data tip. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to learn loads more on creating effective presentations, slides, data visuals, and stories, think about becoming a CMKG member for a low annual cost. Happy learning!